Thank you. Mr. Cotton. I am the founder of Cypher LLC. Cypher LLC is <clears throat> a national level incident response and forensics firm specializing in helping companies solve problems. Uh, we also support legal firms uh, in both the uh, plaintiff and the defense side of uh, the legal matters that may arise involving digital evidence. I personally have over 25 years of computer forensics and incident response experience. 13 of those years were spent as a part-time instructor to guidance software. They're now owned by OpenText. Um, they are the manufacturers and the makers of the NK software. I have a master's degree in information technology. I also am a CISSP and hold numerous uh, forensics certifications. Very good. Um, and if, Madam President, if it's okay, I'll, I would like to start with the first question. Please. Um, and this question um, would be for um, Mr. Logan. Um, we've heard that there were other audits um, that have already be, been done. Um, why do we need to do this audit? So I'm hoping you can help me understand how this audit is different than some of the other audits that have, have been done. Sure. So the other audits primarily focused on making sure that the version of software that was expected to be running on the machines, whether that's the tabulators or the EMS or so forth, was in fact the version that was in use. Um, they, they also did, um, they ran some off-the-shelf software to detect any malware that's on the machines, and they ran logic and accuracy testing, which involves taking about 100 sample ballots run it through the system and making sure that for those sample ballots, they're counting. But at no point in any of those audits that they actually take a look at actual ballots and run those ballots through, through the system or do actual counting of it to validate the results, they're all focused on whether it was the right type or whether the right version of the software. Um, our audit is focused on specifically the results. Um, are the results exactly as they, were, they came through? Are they the way that they were cast? And does it go all the way through the system that way? This audit that they're doing um, in Arizona, they launched it in April. They said it would take three weeks. It's, of course, now mid-July, and they're still going strong. They made clear today that they're definitely finding all the fraud they've been fantasizing about, but it's definitely going to take lots more investigation, lots more materials, probably lots more donations from Trump supporters nationwide. It looks like they will subpoena more stuff from the county, Maricopa County, where they got all these ballots from. The way they were talking about it today, it sounds like they think they've got weeks to go, maybe months still to go. It's such a big, complex investigation. There's no sign, actually, that there was anything wrong with the presidential vote in Arizona. The head of Cyber Ninjas, the guy on the left, this random QAnon promoting guy who Arizona Republicans assigned to lead the audit, uh, he kept insisting at this hearing today that this is an incredibly complicated, incredibly complex, very, very dis difficult process. And therefore, it's going to take a lot more time and obviously a lot more money for him. <laughs> it's going to take lots more work to figure it all out. Um, Maricopa County itself, the county they took all the ballots and the voting machines from, uh, they responded today with this, quote, it's complicated and difficult for Senate contractors to do this audit because they are not qualified to do this audit. It would be like asking Doug Logan from Cyber Ninjas to play point guard for the Phoenix Suns. That, too, would be complicated and difficult because he's not qualified to do that. That was from the county itself today. The chair, the Republican chair of the uh, County Board of Supervisors responded to this briefing on the Arizona Clown Show audit today uh, with this. He said, quote, it's clear the people hired by Arizona Senate leadership to supposedly bring integrity to our elections are instead just bringing incompetence. At today's briefing, the Senate's uncertified contractors asked a lot of open-ended questions, portraying as suspicious what's actually normal and well-known to people who work in elections. In some cases, they dropped bombshell numbers that are simply not accurate. What we heard today represents an alternate reality that has veered out of control since the November general election. Senate leadership should be ashamed. They broadcast the half-baked theories of the deep rig crowd to the world today. To Senate leaders, I say, stop accusing us of not cooperating when we've given you everything qualified auditors would need to do this job. Finish your audit, release the report, and be prepared to defend it in court.
trying not to be flippant, but yeah. that, that's. We appreciate that. In one of those digital copies as um, primary evidence. And so we locked that away in a U.S. government GSA approved safe to ensure that uh, no one would access it and that it is there as the primary evidence uh, for the basis of our analysis. We then created um, uh, examination copies that we have used for the um, determination of the cybersecurity status and other aspects of those, of those systems. Okay. So I must reiterate, not a single bit of data was ever changed on any device that came into our possession. So, Madam President, uh, Mr. Cotton, um, are you saying that there, the machines were not damaged or tampered with in any way where they couldn't be used again? And if they were, you have implemented the, uh, people could check and see whether that was done. Uh, Senator, that, that is correct. So um, we have exactly a bit-for-bit -bit image of these systems as we received them, okay? We did not modify, we did not uh, change any uh, chips, we did not access any, uh, anything other than the hard drives uh, for those systems. So if there were any changes to the original equipment, those had to have occurred within the custody of the Maricopa County um, Board of Supervisors, not with uh, the custody of the auditors. Okay. So if there were any changes to the original equipment, those had to have occurred within the custody of the Maricopa County um, Board of Supervisors, not with uh, the custody of the auditors. Okay. So what have we not received from the county that we um, were supposed to get to be able to um, do the uh, forensic analysis of? I think if I'm going to put these in order of criticality, uh, we have not received the uh, router uh, configuration files. We have not received the router data. And um, Mr. Bennett and myself were in uh, multiple uh, conversations with county officials in which they had agreed to provide that information to us. Um, we had actually entered into a compromise with the county in which uh, they would provide us with virtual access uh, to that data <coughs> in addition to providing us with um, Splunk NetFlow data um, with a time period of uh, approximately uh, 90 days prior to the election and 60 days after the election. Um, and we had agreed to that. Um, we have not received that uh, due to a response from the county um, in May stating that they would not provide that because the data um, would compromise law enforcement operations and would also potentially compromise PII information of Maricopa County residents that had not already been uh, turned over as part of the audit request. Okay, now tell us the significance of us not, uh, why do you need to look at the um, routers and the router data and the Splunk logs that they have, that they originally told us they were going to give us and now they have, you know, they, they're not going to provide that or they're saying they won't provide that. What's the significance? Why do we need to look at that? Well, it's critically important to, to uh, substantiate some findings that we are seeing um, through the uh, keyword searching and the processes I've already mentioned. Um, there are a number of things that we know as a matter of fact have occurred that we need to further take that information and validate that information. So for example, we know uh, through public record, public statements, um, that uh, an element of the election system was actually compromised or breached during the course of the November 2020 election. Um, it is a matter of public statement by Maricopa County as well as um, legal action and law enforcement action um, 
surrounding that particular incident. Um, the, the registration server that was public facing um, did have unauthorized access to that. In, in, in uh, cybersecurity terms, it was breached. We, we know that uh, the county has accepted that as an unauthorized breach because they actually issued a letter to a small subset of the voters who were affected by that breach. And they issued that in January of 2021. So, uh, Madam President, Mr. Cotton, um, if, if they could have act, if they were able to get access, how long would it take somebody to to um, hack in or whatever to the, if they're the vulnerabilities that exist on these systems would take an average script kitty less than 10 minutes to get access to these systems okay so this is high vulnerability situations Correct. so we need to get the routers it's clear we need to get the routers we need even if it's just a report they can scan it they can look at it they can do whatever they need to do to make it sh safe um, we just need to see the traffic during this election or during this period that you're looking for. Now they've brought up security concerns. Are these, are these, do you believe these are valid concerns that they brought up um, from sharing their, the router traffic or router reports with us? Anything from the router? Are these valid security concerns from your, from your point of view? They're not. One of my so, concerns, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Please. Um, when we received the letter from Sheriff Penzone stating that they, uh, we would not get the routers because of a potential security issue, the one thing that stuck in my mind, um, I just heard you say that there is not a valid security concern there, but just hypothetically, if for some reason they think that there's a security concern, my question is, is why would they be using the same router as our election systems, as, as other, if there's even a small remote possibility that they think that somebody could be jeopardized, why are we sharing routers with other uh, with other agencies? Why don't they have their own personal secure router? Ma'am, I can't answer why they shared that space, but once again, this is one of those situations where what they've told the public is drastically different than a, the apparent reality in response to a legal subpoena. Okay, so from a from a public response standpoint, Maricopa County officials have repeatedly uh, stated that the election system was a closed system; it did not touch the internet, and by therefore, um, it could not have commingled with the data from the Sheriff's Department or the Maricopa County uh, other office space. The fact that they have responded back to an official subpoena with the justification that to produce that data would compromise these other aspects of the Maricopa County network that does touch the internet is an admission that maybe things aren't like what they've told the American public. Okay. When um, when we took a look at this, um, we found specifically in March, and I believe it was March 11th, there were 37,646 queries for a blank password on a system that only contained eight accounts. <coughs> Now, given the short time period that that, uh, that happened, that clearly was a script that was executed um, by the user um, uh, EMS admin, okay? Um, what we don't have, because of the, the lack of logs and the condition of that system, is where did that script come from, okay? so. By leveraging the router information and by re leveraging the uh, Splunk information, I should be able to determine who was using the EMS admin account uh, at that particular time and where did that originate from. And the reason we need the Splunk logs 
is because those 37,000 queries churned the, the data so that you can only look back to February 5th, or what was the date? Uh, February 5th. Fe February 5th. That is correct. And obviously, we need to go back to the election. Correct. <laughs> we need to be looking at the election day, prior to the election day, looking at access. So we don't have that, what we were given, we don't have that, um, that window, which is the critical window we need to look at. That is correct. Okay. Uh, you know, you would think that any audit firm would uh, would be looking at, and that is commonality of passwords. So what we have found is that for all the administrative accounts, no matter what the name of that account was, um, they shared the same password. Okay. Now that password appears to have been established at the same time that the Dominion software was installed on these systems, which August of uh, 2019, and does not appear to have been changed during that entire time period. What we are seeing here, um, and what does require additional correlation with NetFlow data, is we're seeing anonymous logins at the system level that do not follow that pattern of normal Windows behavior, okay? And so we need to have that additional data to validate uh, what that activity is.